War Thunder at this point already has a very diverse set of missiles that each nation uses. Some of the original AIM-9B and R-3S we started with, we now have gone to missiles like the A-54 Phoenix, R-24, and the R-550 Magic 2. With Generation 4 aircraft making their debut this update, we know that we're definitely getting what would be considered Generation 4 missiles because some of the aircraft that should be added to complete the Generation 4 collection only ever use Generation 4 missiles. So today, we're going to take a look at these missiles and try to form an expectation of what we can see in the coming updates. But before we get into that, let's ask what makes a missile Generation 4? So unlike fighters, there's really no agreed upon criteria that missiles should have before being considered Generation 4 missiles. Hell, even the term itself isn't also an officially recognized term. It just seems to be how people classify certain models of missiles to give people an idea of how these missiles perform. Really, it's more of a collection of common traits and actual criteria to consider them belonging to a certain generation. Some would also consider them to be literal missile generations, with the AIM-9B and its copies being first generation missiles, second generation being the R-13, AIM-9E, and D, and the third generation being the R-60 and R-60M, Magic 1 and 2, AIM-9G, H, L, and M, PL-5, and the Python 3. I suppose, in some way, these generations also inherently have certain properties to them. But instead of speculating, let's actually take a look at Generation 4 missiles so we can see the properties that they possess. The first missile we're going to take a look at is most likely the next top tier missile we'll see for USSR. The R-73 or the AA-11 Archer. This comes in three variants, the R-73, R-73E, and the R-73M. The original R-73 was developed as a successor to the R-60M and was fitted on most modern Soviet aircraft with older models being modernized to carry them. These include the MiG-23 MLD, SU-24, and SU-25. The original model is known for its wide missile track angle, being able to target any aircraft with a helmet-mounted sight 120 degrees off boresight. It had a maximum range of about 30 kilometers, twice that of the AIM-9L and its contemporaries. The R-73E is the same in every respect except for the longer burn motor, increasing its maximum range to 40 kilometers. Both missiles can pull at least 40 Gs. The R-73M is the ultimate upgrade to the R-73, entering service in 1996, allowing a full 180 degree off boresight tracking. The deflector paddles on the R-73 and R-73E are replaced with thrust vectoring nozzles to allow the missile to pull at least 50 Gs. The R-73M is 5 kilograms heavier than the R-73, but has double the maximum range at 60 kilometers. It is considered by some to be superior to the SRAM. The R-73M also includes an electronic and infrared counter countermeasure suite, allowing it to defeat most countermeasures and increase in kill probability. I'll hold off on talking about the R-74 and the subsequent R-74M because they would be mounted on aircraft that I don't see coming in the near future like the SU-57 or the SU-30SM. So, since we've mentioned the ASRAM, we'll consider that next. The AIM-132 ASRAM was born out of the original ASRAM project between the German, British, Norwegian, and Canadian defense industries in a consortium effort to deliver the within visual range counterpart of the American AMRAM. The original ASRAM project was killed off in 1989 and British Aerospace was left to develop what they termed the new ASRAM on their own. The result was a missile using a focal plane array scanner supplied by Hughes Electronics instead of a conical reticle scan that had a 360 degree field of view with inertial mid-course guidance. When launched off boresight, the ASRAM used this inertial guidance to drive the missile blind into the seeker's field of view where the focal plane array seeker generates a 128 by 28 television image of the target. The gimbal also reorients itself to the line of sight of the seeker, making maneuvering impossible as a defense mechanism against the missile. Because the seeker is also a continuous focal plane array instead of conical reticle scan, the only effective countermeasure against the ASRAM requires a plane to blind the seeker as it maneuvers. The ASRAM has a maximum range of about 50 kilometers and could pull up to 50 Gs, but does not use thrust vectoring. The ASRAM is capable of the conventional lock-on before launch and lock-on after launch, allowing it a better first strike capability in head-on engagements, especially with HMDs or IRSDs allowing it to detect targets further than its seeker envelope. The ASRAM is fired from the Royal Australian Air Force F-18 Hornets, Eurofighter EF-2000s, and the British and Australian F-35 Lightning IIs. 
The US can also have the ASRAM for the F-16C as it was the launch platform for the ASRAM during the test at Eagland Air Force Base in 1989. Then, there's the AIM-9X. The AIM-9X was intended as a replacement for the AIM-9M in 1996 when China Lake failed producing the AIM-9R and the AIM-9MR. The reason that the US failed to acquire the ASRAM was that the ASRAM was not ready in 1988, hence they had to start the AIM-9R program. When that failed, China Lake had to expedite the design process on the AIM-9MR, which was not an imaging infrared seeker and remained inferior to the R-73. This led the Air Force to look into other firms for the design of this new missile. The requirements were the same as the AIM-9R. It had to be a high off boresight missile that was integrated with the joint helmet mounted queuing system with a great maneuvering capability with thrust vector and control. Needed to use imaging infrared and utilize the body of the AIM-9M. What resulted was a relatively short range missile that used a focal plane array scanner retaining the canards at the front with shorter tail fins to reduce drag. The AIM-9X has a maximum range of about 25 kilometers and can maneuver up to 50 G. While the AIM-9X was touted to have supreme infrared counter countermeasures, it was noted recently to have failed to maintain lock on a Syrian SE-22 fitter after dropping flares in maneuvering. Its original launch platforms for the F-15C and F-18C, but has since expanded to cover every fighter in current service with the U.S. Air Force. The next missile we're going to take a look at is a Chinese PL-10. Information on this missile is scarce, but from what I can gather, it uses thrust vectoring and free moving tail fins to allow the PL-10 to pull as much as 60 Gs, allegedly. It also uses imaging infrared like the ASRAM. For the primary source I have, the PL-10E is slated to have a range of 20 kilometers, the lowest among these missiles. The only issue of the PL-10 is the launch platforms. So far, it's only slated to be fired from the J-20, J-10C, the new J-16, and the JF-17 Block 3 fighters, which we may not see for a while. Earlier Chinese aircraft used the PL-9 as their primary missiles, based on technology from the Python-3 or PL-8. Speaking of the PL-8, which was already in game and was almost added to the J-8B, we'll talk about the Python-3 successor, the Raphael Python-4. The Python 4 entered service with the IAF in the mid-90s as a supplement to the Python 3. It was fired from the F-15C Basme Chopar and F-16C Barak and is certified for the Chilean F-16s and F-5s, Venezuelan and Colombian Kefirs, and the Jesuit 9 Gripen. Like the ASRAM and the PL-10, the Python 4 uses an array seeker and not a rotating two-color seeker as some sources might put it. This gives a missile IRCCM capability and allows it to possess what is called a second hit capability, which means that in case the missiles miss for the first time, it can maintain track and maneuver towards the intended target even if the intended target is making hard maneuvers of up to 9G. The Python 4 can pull up to 50G and has a maximum range of about 30 kilometers at its maximum altitude of 6.5 kilometers. The Python 4 does not use a thrust vectoring nozzle but instead uses a wide cruciform control surface to achieve high G maneuvers. The Python 4 has a BVR active radar homing variant called the Derby that is often used in conjunction with the Python 4 and standard air to air loadouts. If you think the Python 3 is scary when it drops, you haven't seen the Python 4 and the ultimate development in its family, the Python 5. Speaking of scary missiles, the next one we're talking about isn't scary because of its capability. It's on par with most missiles I've mentioned in this video, but because of its launch platforms and what it might mean for War Thunder is what makes it very scary. Talking about the Iris T, the German product of the ASRAM program. It possesses most of the capabilities that went into the ASRAM, like the 128x128 pixel focal plate array seeker, but was given thrust vectoring capabilities. The IRST also possesses inertial guidance for inertial mid-course guidance and terminal infrared seeker guidance. The missile has a maximum range of 25 kilometers. The scary part is the fact that it is 100% fully compatible with the Sidewinder, thus it is capable of being fired and was fired from an F-4F in 2002. It is now in service with the Luftwaffe's Eurofighter Typhoons and Tornadoes, the Griffins of South Africa, Brazil, and Sweden, which designated the RB-98, and the Italian Eurofighters. The last of the European consortium missiles is the MBDA Mica. 
originally conceived as a unified platform to replace the R530D and F and the Magic 2, the MICA came in two variants. The EM or the Electromagnetic Active Radar Homing variant and the IR or Infrarouge variant with an imaging IR seeker. Because the two missiles were like the same missile with different seekers, the IR variant inherited the EM's range of 60 kilometers. The missile can pull up to 50 g at best and 30 g at worst. It's also capable of a full 360 degree engagement envelope, using the same inertial guidance for mid course correction and infrared or active radar holding for terminal guidance. The missile can be fully slaved to IRSE systems, giving the IR variant tracking ranges farther than its seeker can. The MICA can be fired from the Mirage 2000 and the Rafale in France, and in the case of Morocco, upgraded Mirage F1 MF2000 as tracks. The MICA might be added to the Mirage 2000 at some point, but we'll have to sell for the R530D and Magic 2 for the meantime. The last of the IR missiles we'll be covering today is the AAM-5 from Japan. Yes, I understand that there are still missiles like the V3CA Darter for South Africa and the MAA-1 Piranha for Brazil. Of course, I would like to discuss them, but I am a War Thunder-oriented content creator at first, and I would like to keep this video within the nations that are currently represented in the game. Anyway, the AAM-5 was developed to replace the AAM-3 just 10 years after it entered initial operating capability in Japan. It entered service in 2004 and was rated to be launched from the F-15J, F-15DJ, and the Mitsubishi F-2. Like the missiles before it, the AAM-5 features an IR imaging seeker and thrust vectoring capability. It is expected to maneuver right up to 50G as well and had a range of 35 kilometers. These Generation 4 missiles will present a drastic shift in the meta when they arrive. Thankfully, some of these are hidden behind extremely advanced aircraft like the PL-10 and the ASRAM, so we might not see them in the game for a long time. But to think we can see missiles like the Python 4 and the Iris-T in the near future should mean that Gaijin is revamped Air RB for the case of very modern aircraft. Certainly, the range stated above will be greatly nerfed by engagement altitudes and Gaijin taking very conservative load values for the missiles as we saw with the Magic 2's 35G and the AIM-9L's 30G. You might definitely see these missiles not perform up to real-life expectations because of how War Thunder's dogfights turn out. However, the second hit capability and 360 degree tracking might be a massive shift in the War Thunder meta and we're yet to see how these aircraft will turn out. Maybe you'll just see your F-4 being shot down by the F-18 you're chasing. Maybe not. Anyways, thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for the part 2 of this video about beyond visual range AAMs like the R-77 and the Meteor. This is the Dr. MD and as always, thank you for watching and Godspeed.